10 minutes here of the meeting. And uh, looks like uh, it's about 7 o'clock. I think we have the members here that are going to be here. So I'll uh, call to order the uh, October 16th, 2014 meeting of the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals in Reading. Uh, the first case we have on the agenda tonight is case number 1418. Uh, is that petitioner here? Yes. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and read through the uh, uh, orders here, and uh, then you can uh, have your say on that. Yep. Uh, okay, we'll read the legal notice. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at the Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, October 16, 2014, at 7 p.m. on the petition of LCB Senior Living, LLC, who seeks a special permit under Section 4.7.3C of the Zoning Bylaws in order to install a municipal building reuse sign on the property located at 75 Pearl Street, Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, and members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before this board is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak, please stand and raise your right hand. And I'll administer the oath. Okay. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Response as I do. Oh, okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The floor is yours. Hi, my name is Ted Doyle. I'm from LCB Senior Living. We recently purchased uh, the assisted living community on uh, 75 Pearl Street, uh, and we have since renamed the community uh, the residence at Pearl, Pearl Street. Uh, for that purpose, we erected a temporary sign, which is on the property right now, and what we would like to do is now install a permanent sign uh, for identification of the property from the street. Um, the sign itself conforms to the dimensional bylaws. Uh, it does fall under the historic reuse um, and therefore the ZBA's uh, authority. Uh, and and uh, I have conferred with uh, Mr. Redman uh, on this application to make sure that it was complete and, and uh, in, in the order that you would expect it to be. Um, I'm not sure if anyone has any questions about the sign or us, but I'm happy to answer whatever you would like to hear. Okay. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I do believe, let me see here, that we did receive, yes, Glenn isn't here tonight, but he did leave us a memo uh, on this, and uh, I will go ahead and read his uh, comment on that, I don't know if everybody got it, I think it was in the packets there, but, uh, case number 1418, 75 Pearl Street. Uh, Glenn notes, this is a municipal reuse sign application for 75 Pearl Street and a special permit under section 4.7.3C is required. Glenn notes, he does not have any objection for this request. So, David, uh, any questions of, of the applicant? Uh, I have an observation. Okay. Uh, and that is that I think the applicant needs to amend his application. I think we should probably do that here uh, because you've cited to the wrong section of uh, ah. 473. Uh, oh, maybe yes. that was just a typo on, on the application that was filled out. You've got the right one. But that doesn't seem to have made it into the posting and into the uh, Right, into I see it's, it, should be, uh, so it should be e, e, 3E instead of 3C. Uh, right. Also, yeah, no, it should be E. Yeah, it should be E, yeah. and, and it seems to have either been a, been transcribed incorrectly or yeah. no, that's, somehow that's, never made it there. Yeah. But we'll but make we note should, of that. Yeah. We should proceed under E. Okay. E, right. Uh, and other than that, I have no questions. Thanks. Kathleen? I have no questions either. John, any questions? <coughs> no questions at this time. Okay, Sai? 
The only one I have is there's a couple of sets of prints in here. One of them is dated uh, June 6th, which shows pictorials of what is temporarily on the board now. And then we received another one dated 9-3, which shows a different print type. That's, that's correct, yeah. Is what's there correct or is what is Well, I, I think you might have received what we submitted in order to put the temporary sign up. Probably that's yeah. that one was in yeah. the package. Yeah. Um, then what we, we submitted the was the one that you have in front of you that shows the green sign with the with the uh, 75 pearl down below the arch, the arc. That's the sign that we would like to put mm -hmm. up. So instead, is, instead of what notes up there now is written like like it's written at Street. Yeah, it's exactly. Be, we 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 determined um, we determined across the company-wide that that convention is a little difficult to read from the street um, and we want to make it obviously safe and accurate sure. so so we, we did change that so the one that applies is September yeah, the block order. letters yes okay. that's all I have okay. uh, the only, oh, the thing, I, I had some observations as David said when I looked at it the uh, sign is less than 15 square feet in the area and it uh, only identifies the building and the occupants, I think, which meets the regulations of the uh, sign code there, uh, 3E. And it does replace the existing sign that was there with the, Same the previous uh, owner at that time. So this just reflects the new owner uh, on this. Uh, so other than that, I don't have any uh, further comments. Have, John? One, yeah. one, a couple of questions. Um, under the sign bylaw, um, this calculates out to be exactly 15 square feet. Mm -hmm. And it says under 15 square feet in the bylaw. Or does it say 15 square feet? I, mean, I think it says it can't exceed 15 square feet. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, the second question is you only have the one sign, correct? That's correct. You don't have one in front of the building. No. You just have this one sign. Yes. Sign at the entrance to the uh, facility. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't no see. No larger than 15 square feet, John. Just to no clarify. Is that what it said? It yes, no larger than. No larger than 15. Okay. So we're all set there with this, I thought. And uh, personally, I didn't have any issues with it. And uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, seems to uh, uh, meet the building inspectors uh, okay on that. Uh, I would uh, entertain a motion at this time from, uh, or oh, excuse me, let me open it up. Is there anybody here from the public who would like to uh, comment on this issue? Uh, sir, I'll have to swear you in. You didn't take the oath yeah, before. Sure. Okay. Uh, testimony, uh, I swear that the testimony given by, by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Responses, I do. I do. Oh, okay. Yes, if you name, it, name and address. 15 requested. Okay. I have a question is are you just it says it's a reuse of a public building is is that the specific section of the zoning bylaws the notice that I got was that a sign was going to be it's it's a submitted. reuse of an existing sign I mean, a sign it's that was sign or existing building well it's it's kind of both but what he's here for tonight is to put up a new sign in place of the older sign which identified uh, what the building was before. But the notice said it was a uh, reuse of an existing public building. Uh, and at that time, just question what? The building was previously was used as a school. I understand. I've been when, the, when the permit was granted for the signage, it was based upon the reuse of a, of a municipal structure. Yeah. All right. That became the premise upon which we're moving now. So it's just this, it's like a domino. So yeah, I understand that now. Okay, that's it, the question. And it is. It maybe could have been worded better, but I'm looking at the install a municipal building reuse sign. So, basically. All right, thank you. Okay. Uh, any other further questions or comments? No? I will uh, go ahead and close the public portion of the meeting, and uh, I would entertain a motion from somebody. Kathleen? I move to approve the petition of LCB Senior Living, LLC, who seeks a special permit under section 4.7.3 E mm -hmm. of the zoning bylaws in order to install a municipal building reuse sign on the property located at 75 Pearl Street in Reading, Massachusetts, 
Should we reference this? Reference? As, as referenced? Uh, sure, I would, yeah. I would reference the uh, um, sign. Uh, in the um, document submitted um, by the petitioner, um, prepared by Jen Sign, Design Engineering, 841 Worcester Road, Suite, looks like 514, Natick Mass. Mm -hmm. Did we cite to the right section of the bylaw? E. Yes, E. e and that yeah, looks like this looks like it was dated September third, two thousand fourteen. Exactly. And it's two pages. Yes, sheet one of two and two of two. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah. That's your motion. Yeah. Second. Second. Okay. Second from David. Uh, any further questions from board members? If not, I'll take a vote. All those in favor of the motion, raise your hand. Okay, let it be said, uh, it passes your special <coughs> permit. Okay, uh, we st have some uh, documents for you. I will stamp this in, and you'll have a record that it this is the plan that was approved. And uh, we'll write up a decision on this, and that'll be recorded with the, in the town clerk within two weeks. The decision has to be done within uh, two weeks. So we'll get that into the town clerk. And then from there, that has to be recorded at the Registry of Deeds. Okay. I've, I've had two of them this fall. I haven't had one for years.
Okay, move along. Next case we have on the agenda is case number 1419. Is that applicant here? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. How you doing? Good. Let me uh, go through and uh, read the procedural uh, information here, and we'll go from there. Uh, legal notice. Yeah, you have it right there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a special, or will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street, Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, October 16th, 2014, at 7 p.m., on the petition of Anthony Leo, who seeks a variance under Section 5.0 slash 5.1.2 of the Zoning Bylaws in order to construct an addition 24 feet by 40 feet with a proposed side yard setback of 3.3 feet rather than the required side yard setback of 15 feet on the property located at 18 Shady Lane, Shady Hill Lane, Reading, Massachusetts. John, you need that, right? Uh, unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were all notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department and Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, CPDC, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the Planning Boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before the Board is taken under oath, so if you think you may want to speak, and this includes anybody who may want to get up in the public hearing portion, uh, please stand and raise your right hand. Okay. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Responses yes, I do. I do. Okay. The floor is yours. Well, I just want to thank the zoning board, obviously, for the appeal for the variance uh, for 5.1. My name is Anthony Leo, 18 Shady Hill Lane. Um, we submitted the variance uh, about a couple months ago, uh, the application for the variance. Um, we listed the the four questions of the criteria in regards to uh, why we feel we uh, are going for the additional uh, living space. Uh, if there are questions, I'd be happy to address those questions to the best of my ability. Okay. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, Glenn had a, uh, sent a memo on this particular uh, uh, case, uh, since he wouldn't be here tonight, and I'll go ahead and read it. Uh, building inspector notes, this is a proposal to construct an addition 24 feet by 40 feet, with a side yard setback of 3.3 feet rather than the side yard setback of 15 feet. A variance for this proposal is required. This property is located in the S15 district. The applicant has been informed of the difficulty in obtaining a variance. That is Glenn's notes on that. Uh, Sorry, I'll start with you this time. Okay, we'll change it up a little bit. Okay. Uh, would you like to comment on this? Uh, this is a fairly good sized addition to a piece of property that's there now on a very small lot. Uh, yes, sir. Your argument or the, the information you put forth on your variance right up. I certainly can't disagree with your response to section one of that of the variance criteria. I mean, okay. it is a very difficult lot. Yes. To go in any direction. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Even yeah. the direction you're going in, I think, is even <laughs> difficult. Yep. Uh, so <laughs> I can't, I can't disagree with that. Uh, I don't know what the financial burden is to go in the direction other than the one you're at. I mean, you, you acknowledge that it's going to be tough. Yeah. That's a good. That's a good way to put it. that in any way compared to where it's going now. Yes. Uh, so I think that that argument is a little weak. Uh, the only. As far as the detriment to the public good, if you look at that property, I don't know what the feeling is of, the, of your abutter on that side of the property. Yep. That's very close to the lot line. Yeah. So, uh, and I know if I was living there, I might have a problem with that. But, right. Yeah. Okay. So sure. I mean, that's just an opinion. Okay. And I don't know. Is that is that neighbor here tonight, or did they put they put anything together? No. We we did approach the neighbor verbally without writing a letter of uh, consent or anything of that nature. And we did, you know, verbally speaking uh, to them, we notified them when we got the, um, the date and time. Um, and they did not have any disagreement or any uh, concerns by all. Matter of fact, she approved uh, in her mind to build as much as she wanted. 
to that point, but that was verbally done. It was not written uh, in a letter of that nature, but. Because um, what you're doing is you're putting that, that side wall on your on right. that addition very Absolutely. close to the side wall of their house. I mean, I don't know uh, what that distance is from their house it, to the lot line. Yeah, it's, it's a good distance to a, a, a their garage. That would be their garage and their house uh, above, yeah. above their garage. It's yeah. probably, uh, I would say, maybe 30, 40, uh, you know, maybe 20 yards total from where their house starts to begin. So it's really not next to, abutting directly to it. Um, but I understand what you're saying. Sorry. Okay, I don't know any further questions at this time. Uh, John Durima? Well, first I must apologize. Uh, I always look at the property before coming up to the meeting and, and look to see what the conditions are and so forth. Um, I picked up and prepared for the two two cases, uh, one of which was the wrong case. <laughs> <laughs> so I did not even look at the property, to tell you the truth. So I'm, I'm, um, I'm not prepared to, to address yeah. what, the, what it looks like. Uh, and certainly um, in the past, I've never gone, gone on anybody's property without ask information first, but uh, that being said, I wasn't even there, so. Yeah, um, you're more than welcome to come, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, I think I would um, um, sign on with Cy in, in a couple of respects. One, um, it's a substantial um, addition to the house. Yeah. Um, it does um, encroach within three and a three and a third feet of the, mm -hmm. the property line. Variances are very, very difficult to prove in the, in the beginning. Uh, in the first two arguments, um, one, I, I can't address because I, I didn't see it, but uh, from side looking at it, and what you have done here, I can see that um, there are substantial, or what appears to be substantial reasons why you can't build in this place else. Yeah. Um, the second issue is that variances do not address cost factors per se. Um, so that becomes, as I again said, a, a little bit on the weak side. But the thing that, um, the issue that uh, perhaps is a little questionable is the size of the addition, especially on the 3.3 uh, side setback. Um, and the question that I would ask is, that, you know, we're not even looking at half of that distance. Uh, we're looking at virtually um, almost the entire distance there, um, and I see back to the um, to the jog yeah. that is basically half of the distance on the setback. Uh, not that I'm suggesting that you go back that far, but <coughs> right. I, I I don't. My my big question to you would be, what alternatives did you look at beside yeah. that particular size addition? Uh, relative to the existing house uh, versus putting that same addition um, someplace else on the lot. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, we initially looked at going out of the back of the house. And because there is a cesspool and a septic there and a deck, and it, we, it would cost uh, financial hardship in the sense that we would have to redo our kitchen, which is pretty much the main living space of the, of the middle portion of the house, that and the bathroom. And so we were trying to refrain from going that direction. Um, the other side of the house, the southeast side of the house, there is a town easement. And so that wasn't gonna help us. And so the only alternative um, was to do it on the, um, what, we would be, what we would deem as the, uh, I guess the northwest side or um, on the other side of the house. And so from um, a standpoint, we did look at making it smaller. And that was, uh, but it wasn't conducive to where, what we were looking for at the time of uh, talking to the contractors and talking to the design engineer. And so he, if you notice on the design drawings, he did invert it a little bit, the first half of it, and then kind of just back out to the back side of it. So we, we did play around with it to the best of our ability. Uh, and, you know. So what you're talking about is, um Rehabbing, uh, it's split, I assume, right? It is, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so you're talking basically about um, rehabbing the entire second floor or the top half of the uh, existing house? Uh, the back, yeah, yes. It would be, a, uh, yes, the answer to the question. Essentially moving it back on the other side, sagging it out on the other side of a split, for a split. 
But the kitchen is still in the same location as it is it today? Is. Yes, we do not intend. The purpose was not to touch the kitchen because we didn't want to uh, move into additional uh, expenses. Uh, we were just looking for more living space, essentially. And that was uh, the, the best location we could actually place uh, the addition. So your thought is that right now you could not move it back? Um, it, it's, it's somewhat of a hill, so if we move it back further than what it is, it, it would cause additional uh, burden to what's already, to what Cy was saying earlier. Uh, you're going to cause even additional uh, drilling and ledge potential, potentially chipping and, and removal of soil. Uh, so. But your great room is like 24 by 18, which is. I, I, yeah. I, I guess I'm looking at what, what did you go through to say we want all of this stuff, we're willing to reduce it to something that's more reasonable because variances, as, as Sai has already mentioned, yeah. are very difficult um, sure. unless you meet all four of the criteria, not just three of them, yeah. which you must meet all four. I'll just leave it at that to see what everybody else has. Okay. Um, the one question I had was, um, I know you have an immediate neighbor, but there also looked to be a house just the kitty corner? Yes. To the back? And are they in favor of? of well, they were sent the uh, part of the. So that's who you, they, you sent it to them. Did you speak with them as well? And we did not verbally speak with them. We don't. It's kind of kitty corner to okay. like, uh, about five feet. You know, right. It looks almost to be closer to them than it does to your mm -hmm. immediate neighbor. Is that right? Or No, no. It would, no, be, it would be more closer to the uh, immediate direct neighbor. Brother. Okay. Yes, yes. That neighbor in the back would. Uh, good distance and then there's two uh, fences in between. Okay, so there's yeah. two fences. Yeah. I think that's all for right now. Great, thank you so much. David? Yeah, I, I guess I just want to go over the, 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 the first variance criteria for, with you. Okay. Uh, you know, this board is, is this board is interested in doing what's what's right, given what the law allows us to do, and and the statutory requirements for a variance are they set the bar high for a reason, and so I want to make sure before we before we move further that the peculiarity there's that's the statutory word there's a peculiarity of shape that's not really here. Yeah. But what you're saying is because of the, the hill or the mound or the ledge in the back of the house, that's the that's what makes the lot peculiar. I think the, the, the sorry, the Cy has mentioned earlier this, this, the the lot itself is somewhat I guess if you want to refer to it as asymmetrical. I think more than anything else, so it's mm -hmm. not necessarily uh, a square lot. Yep. And so, given the easement, the cesspool. And the septic and directly in the back of the house and the, and the kitchen, uh, that was the only location that we deemed to put uh, the addition, or at least pro the proposed addition. All right, and then the, the second and third, under number one, the second and third piece, the water drain easement and the, and the septic pool. Um, I, I, I get the impression that, that that most of what your application is based on is in that subparagraph one, because two and three really don't add the, <coughs> really don't meet the criteria, but I think <coughs> in the interest of adding more information, you might have added those in, just to point those out for the, for the board, would that be fair, or, or what, help me understand that, you just kind of. So if I understand your question, you're asking, so question Un two and three don't under number one. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let, maybe I'm. I'm <coughs> you have paragraph one with subparagraphs one, two, and three under them. So and so that's what I'm just just the top paragraph that yeah. has little indented paragraphs one, two, and three. Yes. Okay. So uh, those indented paragraphs one, two, and three. The first one is the hill directly in the middle of the property. Yes. And that's what we just went over because yep. there's some ledge there and and that relates to the topography. Well, yes. Uh, and then the last, the, the numbers two and three indented paragraphs there. 
yep. related to the water drain easement and the septic and cesspool, right? Yes. Okay. But those not those aren't necessarily related to anything related to the to the shape or the topography or the soil conditions related to the lot, right? So you just added them for some additional information to point those out, that those conditions out. To address the question number two on the variance criteria, where it says describe how the level of enforcement of the provisions, um, and then otherwise financial hardship. Yes, so we pointed them out to, to, to kind of caveat off the first question because it kind of flowed together. Okay. Yes. All right. And there was also more of a, you know, how it, just to really point out that there is a financial hardship there uh, from an ex uh, standpoint of taking out a septic, taking out a deck, possibly redoing a kitchen. So we did look at that initially. All right, so maybe I, maybe I didn't ask this question right. Let me, tr let me try it again. Do you want the board to take into consideration indented paragraph two and indented paragraph three as part of your application that you meet the first criteria of a variance? Yes. Okay. All right. I guess that that's that's what I was getting at. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I did go up and look at the property and uh, looking at the topo map, et cetera, on this. Uh, uh, I noted that it is in the S15 district, legal nonconforming lot uh, due to less than the required uh, frontage uh, and also lot area there. Uh, so, you know, S15 is 15,000, you have 12,000, etc. cetera. Uh, question I had, and uh, in, in you do have a septic system in your backyard, and yes. that is one of the reasons why you didn't want to extend it in that direction, the southerly direction in the backyard. You do have a municipal sewer in the street, though, do you not? Uh, yes, yes, I'd, I'd imagine so, yeah. Yeah, uh, so... I'm just, I'm sure the town would love to have you connect to the municipal sewer <laughs> system yeah. and get rid of these uh, septic systems. Yeah. So I don't know how valid that is as a, as a reason why you don't want to do it. Yeah. Yes, you would have to disrupt that and yeah. do some replumbing and relay and yeah. connect to the municipal, and I think that's a plus to the town if you do that. Yeah. Uh, get rid of a septic system there. I don't know if you've had issues with it at all. Knock on wood, no. It works not well. Not it works well, yeah, we get it. Uh, you know, pump every every year or so. Yeah, and so yeah. it works out. Okay, because it is it did, does appear that there is ledge in that area certainly, yep. but uh, obviously it uh, it works. Yep. Uh, now that was one of my questions. Uh, have, have you looked into abolishing uh, that, getting rid of your septic system, and uh, connecting to the municipal sewer? If, Mr. Redford, if we if we did that, you would still have to do the kitchen over and then yes. replace a the deck. Yeah. Before you even, uh, you know, remove the septic and the, and the right. cesspool. I mean, that, that significantly uh, incurs an expense on the family that we weren't expecting. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, and, and you're right. I, I do see the on your plot plan here the building envelope yeah. indicated with the dash line there. Certainly, I think you could if you did come in off the back. Uh, certainly fit it all within that building envelope there and you wouldn't be up here for a uh, variance then yeah but you do have that expense and yeah etc with the, your septic yeah. system but and there's also a hill there as well as you're climbing up there so uh, climbing up yeah uh, I did you what well, you did provide I think here there is a uh, yeah contour map on uh, yeah. one of your uh, issues here it looks like, yeah, it it goes uphill towards the addition that you want, towards your westerly side? Straight across. Straight across? Uh, yeah. Yeah. To the back of the backyard. Right. And it uh, looks like it's a, uh, it's a low point, kind of, yeah, a low area down on your, would be your easterly property line. Mm -hmm. It's lower than your westerly property line. That's correct. There. Yeah. Uh, on that. Uh, well, as they say, uh, it's very difficult to get a variance and especially I mean you know asking for for the variance that you're asking for uh, it's supposed to be 15 foot and you're asking to uh, us to give you a variance for 11.7 feet yeah it's quite a bit have you thought about talking to your abutting 
property owner about uh, purchasing land over there enough to on that oh, side on the westerly side to it doesn't appear that they use it yeah you know when i went up and took a look at it, it's kind, yeah. kind of up there in rocky yes yeah. i don't yes. know yes. and you know reconfiguring the property line on that side yeah. to uh fit it in yeah that was not something that i did or approached uh, yeah it, uh, it's possibly yeah it's something i thought you know as an option uh as i said uh, before uh boards this board anyway uh in in past experience yeah. has difficulty uh you know, with a variance of this size, I think, sure. uh, on that. <coughs> but uh, any other questions? If not, I'll open it up to public yeah. comment. One more. Josai, yeah. Did you give any thought? Uh, your pro proposed addition is straight along the side of that current, current residence. Okay? Yeah. Have you ever thought about maybe putting an L-shaped addition on there? Part of it's off the back of the house and part of it's off the side of the house? That would buy you... More setback. Yep. Um, if you did that, okay. Yeah. And just looking at the plan, uh, it would seem to me that with a little bit of thought, that you still might be able to achieve what you want to do, although it would be in a different form. It would require you to move the deck right. back off from the. Right. But yeah. that's a possibility. We, <clears throat> we initially looked at coming, going flush with the house, and then he ended up moving the design drawings back a little right. bit further. And then he did provide a drawing with the L shape and uh, the way the lot was. So, like I mentioned earlier, but being asymmetrical in that sense, it, it just didn't it didn't look well on paper, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, even though it would fit the criteria, as you're saying, it just wasn't something that my family and I considered that we would want to move forward with. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he could actually purchase. Huh? I don't know if he could purchase any any uh, frontage. Um, because you're making the uh, well, no, I don't think you could purchase frontage, but you could adjust that sideline. Yeah. Uh, some, see something like this, John came there, just held that something like that. It it's kind well, of an I odd see, shape, I but see, it's I enough to fit it, it in. Yeah. You know, uh, it's it's an option. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, you are. It, it, it's, a, it's a tough possibility. You do have your septic system. Uh, you, granted, there's a way to get around that. Either right. you, you, you abandon it and connect yeah. to the municipal sewer. Possibly purchasing uh, property from uh, your abutter uh, on that. Uh, it, it's, it's a large addition that you're going on. I think that Mr. Dream had noted there that it's a pretty good size. Uh, great room. I, I you know, we'd all like to have have that if we could, but you well, yeah. you do have a constraint with your property, and yeah. I think a lot of people in Reading, because of the lots sizes, etc., sure. have to live with their constraints yeah. uh, on that. Did you think about taking that whole proposed addition you got there now and just moving that addition back? We did do that, yes, and it, that, that was uh, the third iteration that is going through the design. It didn't just well, it didn't look well to us uh, mm -hmm. from that standpoint. And then it wasn't, from a, the way it would be viewed, we, it's a cul-de-sac, obviously, so from the street view, it would it, it just looked awkward, quite frankly. This was the best looking for the neighborhood. It would beautify the neighborhood in the, in the sense that mm -hmm. it would fit in the, into the neighborhood that's there. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did look at a lot of options. It wasn't, you know, something that we just put together and said, let's just go down this road. It's something we're considering. The, the other alternative is to sell and move to another town. I and mean, that's the uh, idea. We want to find another house in this town that we could uh, somewhat affordable in that yeah. sense. I mean, so those are the options. So it's least difficult we, that you, you're got a property with a structure on it that really doesn't allow you a lot of latitude. I know. Okay? I know. Yeah. And uh, it's unfortunate, but yeah. that's the way life is. Yeah. So I think we ought to note just as a board um, and just remind ourselves that uh, we're here to consider whether or not the four criteria are met, not that there may be other options, right. not that, that despite that right. there may be other right. suitable, that, you know, maybe other more suitable options, uh, so that we're meeting our statutory mandate. I just right. 
Right. Uh, I, know all, we, I know we like we all spend an awful lot of time thinking about what we might suggest in terms of a better option, and we want to make sure that applicants have considered all options, but we're here to vote on the four criteria right. and whether or not those are met. Exactly. Exactly. And that's ultimately what the decision will be based upon tonight is, has the applicant met the four criteria? Yeah. yeah. Uh, any other questions uh, from board members? If not, I will open it uh, to public comment. Uh, is anybody here from the public who would like to comment on this? If you could swear you in. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Answer is, or I response do. is, I do. I do. Okay, if you could uh, name and address for the record. My name is Joe Guerrilla. I live at Five Shades Hill Lane. I've been here for almost 40 years. So I'd just like to comment on the lots in our particular area. There are two cul-de-sacs. We have 12 houses in total. They're all odd-shaped houses. And the Leo family has been there for several years. They're good neighbors, they're good people. There's no reason that I see why they should have to move to, you know, to add addition to their home so that they can add to their growing family. If you look at the, the, the proposals or the suggestions, perhaps is a better word, for buying property from the next door neighbor, I know all these neighbors, I've spoken to them, again, there's only 12 of us, and nobody objects to this addition, including the, the, uh, the, uh, the, the next abundance. So, I mean, it's something that if the board sees fit to do and can approve, I think it would be great to keep a family in here because they're good people, and I think it's a good thing to do for the town of Reading. Because of improving the property, and I invite you all to come and look at these lots. They're all the strangest looking lots you've ever seen in your life. They go this way, they go that way, but it's, it's, it's a crazy situation. But the town approved it many years ago, so I can see, I can see what they're trying to do. If he's trying to stay in the town of Reading, I think it's a great idea if the board would consider his request. Thank you. Great, thank you. Uh, any other comments from uh, public? Nobody else? I will close the public portion of the meeting. Uh, is there any further questions from board members? John. Well, I just want to uh, more or less uh, reemphasize what David had said. 40A is very specific. It says you must meet all criteria, all four criteria. Um, and it's difficult for all the board members, as, as David also said, looking for options, you know, to help the applicant out. Um, but the most difficult um, relief to gain through the board is through a variance. So I just wanted to reemphasize what David said and, and um, um, also indicate to the applicant that um, in moving forward, uh, he has basically um, one other option that he has not uh, exercised yet. And I just want to throw that out there. And that is, um, as was mentioned, you have not um, looked at the alternative as um, Bob said to go to one of your neighbors and see if there's a, a means of taking a little slice out of his area. Yeah. And if the engineering department will approve that. But if you go forward and this board were to, I'll just say, not approve you, you could not come back for a period of two years. Right. However, the other option to you would be to withdraw without prejudice and perhaps look in that direction before this board actually takes a vote this evening. Yeah. I just offer it to you. I, I appreciate the opportunity. It's, it's not something that my wife or I uh, would particularly uh, necessarily think about and, and probably pursue, uh, okay. given the status of the next door of Director Butter. Um, and so it's not, um, you know, I think of it as the same way if someone was asking me to sell my piece of the pie that I worked hard for all my life. Um, and I'm sure anybody in the board can attest to that as well. When you work for something, you, uh, it's yours. You don't typically want to give it up necessarily for somebody you don't know. Mm -hmm. Even for your family at that time, some people don't want to give it up. So, uh, you know, I, I know it's not an easy decision, as uh, some of the abutters have mentioned tonight. 
the lots are not, they're not square lots, they're not perfect lots. The homes were built in the 60s and 70s. And so we're just trying to remain in the town that we live in. We've been there 10 years. The kids love the town. They love the school system. And we want to maintain doing that and have more living space. So it's, uh, I respect the board for the opportunity and, and the decision you guys come up with. <clears throat> it's uh, you, you know not not to beat a dead horse here, but on your property. I mean, if you worked with the abutter and, and an attorney and something, it's only a property line that's that's you're looking to adjust over there to to fit it in. You could create easements that you would never build there. Uh, you know, within this parcel that you purchase, you could uh, have an easement that it's to be left in its existing state, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I mean, things things could be worked out there. Uh, you could purchase it, give an easement to your neighbor to, uh, you know, occupy it, or, or not occupy it, but to use that if right. they've been using it, et cetera. Uh, keep it as a natural border between you and your abutter there, which I think it pretty much acts as now as a yes. natural border. Yes. Yep. I mean, things, things can be worked out that way, too. Sure. But... You know, I, I think you can hear what some of the board members are saying tonight. Uh, personally, I find it a, a difficult, uh, given a, a variance uh, for this for this amount. Uh, I think uh, you know you you may have arguments uh, that you meet uh, the variance uh, the number one there the criteria number one. Uh, I don't know for sure because I, I think the septic system is a self-made uh, issue. It's right. really got nothing to do with the topography of the land or the shape of the lot or something. It's something that could be alleviated. Yeah. Uh, and then I think uh, criteria number four, I think, if, if it were granted, uh, would nullify and degrade uh, the... Uh, intent or purpose of the zoning bylaw of, of the town. The town has a bylaw, has a 15 foot side yard setback for a purpose. And uh, I, I think, it, it, you know, by doing that for that amount, uh, for 11.7 feet, uh, it, uh, you, my personal opinion is you'd be derogating from, from the zoning bylaw on that but, uh, substantially. But that's, that's me. Sure. Uh, we can go on and continue, and uh, I'll ask for a motion here uh, on this if you would like. Uh, as John said, there is a couple of options. You could withdraw without prejudice. You could ask for a continuation uh, to another, to, you know, a date, uh, possibly uh, even then two weeks from now, which is, I believe, November 6th we meet. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, I think we, right now we just have one item on the agenda that night. You could do that, talk it over with your wife, maybe do it. But it's up to you. We can yeah. go ahead and make a motion tonight and go with this. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, uh, Mr. Redfern, I respect that. And I, yeah. What I would say is just uh, make okay. a motion. And, uh, go we will continue there. then, Thank certainly. You, uh, if there's no further questions, I will entertain a motion on this uh, case tonight. I will uh, I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, I move that the Zoning uh, Board of Appeals allow the petition of Anthony Leo for a variance under 50 and 512 of our zoning bylaw in order to construct an addition with the dimensions of 24 by 40 feet uh, with a proposed side yard setback of 3.3 feet rather than required setback of 50. This, this says 20. That's the it type says 20. Uh, the application is 50. It's 15. 15 yeah. feet uh, on the property located at 18 Shady Hill Lane in Reading, Massachusetts, as more fully set out by the petitioner and the uh, drawings. And do we have a stamp plot plan? Yeah, we do. Uh, yes. The of a stamp plot plan dated July 10th, 2014, by Edward J. Farrell, professional land surveyor of 110 Wind Street, Suite 203, Woburn, Mass. And uh, drawings, 
additionally submitted, done by JustDrawIt.com, Inc., 14 Grove Street in Reading, Mass., uh, dated sometime in 2014. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was June. Is that right? Okay. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> your eyes are better than mine, but yeah. you may have a recollection of when that was done. Looks like June 24th. Okay. June, yeah. So, uh, and the drawings dated June 2014. Uh, drawings A1, A2, a3, 4, uh, A1 through 4. Okay. So moved. Okay. I'll second that. Uh, do you want to change one word in your motion? Which word do you like? The or <laughs> and? The <laughs> Allow to grant. Okay. I will, I will amend my motion. By, well, you've seconded it, so... I will. Oh. I will. You <laughs> I, I got to. I, I, so I'll have to restate my. I'll have to amend my motion in order for you to second it, won't I? <laughs> I, I, I withdraw my second to your original motion. So you can amend Then it. I'll change the word from <laughs> allow to grant, uh, and the I'll rest of the motion stands. Oh, okay. And I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and it would be standard conditions, right? Yep. Uh, standard conditions. On that. Right. Which standard conditions are you must get a building permit from the building inspector, a uh, foundation permit from the building inspector must be approved before you get a yes. building permit for the superstructure. Yes. And then the whole thing has to be inspected by the building inspector before you get an occupancy permit. Yes, sir. Those are the three standard, yep. we call them standard, yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, any now that I went through those in <laughs> more detail for the petitioner? No. No, I'm good. I, I think good it's on your website that. as well, so you could, yeah, okay. You, you, you would have those. to, even if we did even know that you would have to do it anyway. Yeah, but we sure like Glenn, to know. I'm sure Glenn will contact. Yeah. Yeah. With those, with those three conditions as well, sure. plot plan and drawings, amended to the word grant. Right. Uh, any further comments from members of the board? If not, I will take a vote on that. All those in favor of the motion, uh, please indicate by raising your hand. All those opposed to the motion, please in, raise your hand. Let the record show that the motion did not pass and the variance request was denied by a vote of zero five zero. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yep. Thank you. Okay, thank you, John. Let me just do some paperwork here. Yeah. David. Okay. Later in the uh, meeting, uh, as one of our options in the Zach review, um, was that intention to look at just 7.0, or was that to look at the entire uh, 
uh, warrant Article 8? Uh, we would be looking at the entire warrant, uh, well, at least an overview of the warrant Article 8. I have Okay. That, just a question. Okay. Just filling the dead space between the two. We can talk about that. Later. No, yeah, I guess, yeah, you're right. We, well, we, right. She did email it to us. She right. did. So you printed it out? As I you did. don't need it. I okay, I don't need it. I'll put it like this. Yep. I don't need it. Okay. Next case tonight, we have case. Oh, look at this. I wrote, I did, I wrote it in the wrong one, I bet. Because. <laughs> I messed you up. I, know <laughs> that. I apologize. I already apologized. No. Uh, okay. Did you sleep on the sunshine? No. <laughs> I'll have to fix that up after the meeting. Then. Okay. Uh, next case tonight is case number fourteen twenty. Um, petition is here. Right. Yep. yep. Let me go through the legal notice and write Kathleen. Yes, I got uh, Okay. has noted she's going to recuse herself from this case. Uh, but let me go ahead and open the meeting here, and we'll uh, go from there and let you know what the ramifications of that are. Uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals will hold a public hearing in the Selectman's Meeting Room at the Town Hall, 16 Lowell Street. Reading, Massachusetts, on Thursday, October 16th, 2014, at 7 p.m., on the petition of Kieran O'Sullivan. So I got that, Kieran? Yeah. Uh, who seeks a variance under Section 5.0 slash 5.1.2 of the zoning bylaws in order to add a two car garage to the left side with a proposed setback of 10.3 feet rather than the required 15 feet as per the plan submitted on the property located at 31 Curtis Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Unless there is an objection, I will dispense with the reading of the abutters list, except to say that the abutters were notified, as were the following. Board of Selectmen, Town Clerk, Police Department, Fire Department, Building Department, Conservation Commission, Health Department, Assessor's Office, Engineering Division, and CPDC. Uh, members and associate members of the Board of Appeals, as well as the planning boards of Wakefield, Linfield, North Reading, Stoneham, Woburn, and Wilmington. Testimony given before the board is taken under oath. So if you think you may want to speak, please stand and raise your right hand, and I'll swear you in. I swear that the testimony given by me before this board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Response is I do. I do. Okay, thank you. The floor is yours. Great. Uh, for the record, my name is Jack Sullivan. I'm owner of the Sullivan Engineering Group. I'm here representing uh, Karen and Donna O'Sullivan for this project. I'll give the, the board a little bit of background and then I'll address the four criteria why we think relief should be granted for this project. Uh, this is a conforming lot that's improved by an existing single family home. It is, um, it's in the S15 zoning district. There's 109.30 feet of frontage, 100 feet is required. And the lot area is 16,937 square feet, so it exceeds the minimum requirement in the zoning district of 15,000 square feet. Mr. O'Sullivan owned this property for 14 years. Um, it's, an it's, a, it's a four bedroom house with a one car attached garage. It's a relatively flat lot. It's, it's a bit asymmetrical in shape. It's, it's not truly rectangular, it, it, has, it, it's, um, it, it slants off to the northerly side a bit. And there's, there's bordering vegetated wetlands that are in the rear yard which, is, um, which have been delineated. And if we obtain a favorable outcome from this meeting, we will be following up with a notice of intent application with the Conservation Commission to seek approval for the construction of this garage. When Mr. O'Sullivan first contacted me, for this project, so we have to do an existing site survey. I located the existing house. He stated he wanted to build a 28 by 32 foot garage. Uh, when I plotted that out, it fell within 10 feet of the side yard setback. Um, I explained to him if we did a detached garage, by right he can be within t uh, up to 10 feet. Um, so I told him it would be it would be. We could probably work with the zoning board where we have the hardship of the wetlands to the rear yard. 
we'd maintain at least 10 feet. So even if, if he did a detached garage, he could do it by right, but with an attached garage, he'd at least keep 10, 10 feet. Um, th that I thought he, he might have a, a strong case with this board to come in for relief. The existing one car garage is, is roughly 14 by 24. Um, so basically, he, we're basically looking to extend the rear line of this garage. We're limited, there's a 35 foot no structure zone under the local uh, Conservation Commission bylaw. You, you can't place any structure within 35 feet of a weapon. Um, this is the 35 foot buffer zone in this area. What I've also shown is in this blue area here is the actual buildable area for this property. Maintaining a 20 foot front yard setback, a 15 foot side yard setback, and not allowing any work to go beyond the 35 foot no structure zone, he's only left with 4,518 square feet of buildable area to work with. As you can see, in this area, there's an existing house. On the right hand side, he only he has 17.2 feet to the lot line. To the back, he's basically at the 35 foot no structure zone. He might have three or four feet. And the existing house currently sits 40 feet back from the front property line. So as far as criteria number one, it, for a hardship, we would look at the wetlands to the rear. He cannot go to the rear at all on this property uh, without seeking some sort of variance from the, uh, the, the Conservation Commission, which would be difficult to obtain. He could not go to the northerly side where the existing setback is 17.2 feet. If he did, any sort of garage addition or, or, or um, changing the configuration of this he would require a variance. In the position of the existing house, being 40 feet off the lot line is problematic in its own right. He, he's dealing with an existing condition where his house is situated now. If it was pulled forward to 20 feet, we'd be set back but, but it was constructed in 1946. This the, the footprint of this is, is basically the same since 1946. So our claim would be this, the lot is slightly asymmetrical. There's wetlands to the rear of the lot that, 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 that cause an environmental restriction in the positioning of the existing house causes some hardship. What we did, we also looked at the surrounding properties and a lot of the surrounding properties are have two car garages, single family homes, basically in line with the, this existing house. We had looked at an option of pulling this garage extension forward. Right, right now I'm proposing it 40 feet back. It's in line with the front of the house, but what if I pulled it forward to the 20 foot front yard mm -hmm. setback? With a 26 by 32 garage in the back left corner of the garage, he'd still be 12.8 feet off the lot line. So he would still need relief from this board. Additionally, when he met with the architect, Steve Basic, for this project, who's a licensed architect in the town of Reading, the, pulling this forward, it, it wouldn't fit in with the neighborhood, um, and it wouldn't work. It, it wouldn't work with his layout, and we, we thought it would be visually a, a, a negative impact to his abutters. So what I told Mr. Sullivan sh he should do is he should go talk to his neighbors ahead of time, um, try to get letters of support, and to explain to them why we're looking to position this garage extension where we're looking to position it. We didn't want to have to be forced to pull it forward. It would still require a variance on the left-hand side, and it wouldn't fit in with the neighborhood. He obtained over 20 letters of support from abutters that have been submitted for the record as part of this hearing. All the direct abutters support this petition. Um, this plan was presented to them that everyone's in favor of it. In fact, when we go to conservation, I'll note it for this board as well, one neighbor downgrading of the property um, has had drainage, historic drainage problems, is, was just concerned with additional impervious area, possibly adding to any sort of problem. So what Mr. O'Sullivan stated he would do is he, we're gonna put a dry well in, any, any roof runoff from the addition will be hard piped to an underground dry well. Not that that plays into your decision tonight, but that's just, what Mr. O'Sullivan was trying to do when he worked with the neighbors outside of this board, that's why you don't see anyone here tonight for questions. He's already made efforts to go around and, and talk to everyone on that. Um, we did provide a detailed um, description how we meet the four criteria for this project. Um, 
criteria number one, describing the circumstances relating to the soil condition, shape, or topography of the land. As I stated, we feel the wetlands present a hardship. The position of the existing house on its own um, is a hardship in the asymmetrical nature as a minor third aspect, but it's still an aspect pre presents a problem for this. Um, number two, describe how the literal, literal enforcement of the provisions of the zoning ordinance related to circumstances, especially affecting the land or structure in question, would involve substantial hardship, financial or otherwise, to the petition, petitioner. This gets into some of the options we looked at. I, I had originally said, hey, it, this is a mudroom area here, okay, that has been in place since 1946. I, I should note this, Mr. O'Sullivan has three children. Um, I wrote their ages down, 9, 10, and 12. So it's, it's a small four-bedroom house, three of the bedrooms, the fourth bedroom's very small. This is a mudroom area. If he eliminated the mudroom, then the garage could be slid over and it would conform to this. That, that didn't work when we met with the architect is that the, the, the garage is gonna go in at the same elevation as now. There's a set of stairs that lead up into the mudroom. If the mudroom was eliminated, it's an area they use all the time with three kids, shoes, coats, racks, everything else, then they would have to then put steps up into their existing structure, which does not work with the layout of the project. The architect looked at that. It, it would be a hardship financially as well to, to remove that mudroom. There's a cost associated with that. Um, not only losing space in, in the existing house, but the, but the demolition costs to, to remove that area. Um, number three, describe how desirable relief may be granted without substantial detriment to the public good. Um, I think you can see by over 20 letters of support and all the direct abutters in support of this, no one saw this as a negative impact to the neighborhood. Everyone was in support of Mr. O'Sullivan. Um, as we stated and we're up front, the only concern was drainage, which we're going to alleviate with the dry well. So, we, we think this is in keeping with the neighborhood and it, it appears from the letters we received they feel it is as well. And then number four, describe how desirable relief may be granted without nullifying or substantially derogating from the intent or purpose of the zoning ordinance of the town of Reddit. Um, as, as I stated, a detached garage could be constructed by right within 10 feet. We know this isn't detached. But, but we feel with the letters of support from the neighbors, the, the fact that we do have the hardship, that this will fit in with the neighborhood, that it works well, um, and, and, and we don't see it being any sort of, of negative impact to the surrounding properties or, or the intent of the bylaw. Um, the intent of the bylaw was to protect surrounding neighbors from any sort of development with zoning criteria. We know we need relief from the board, and that's why we're here tonight. Like to add anything? Uh, I just want to say thanks uh, to each of you for listening to my appeal. I know you're here uh, as volunteers, and um, I want to acknowledge actually, I've kind of been going around on this for nearly a year, and I just want to acknowledge how good the people in the office and town hall have been. Uh, Maureen Knight has met me a couple of times, and Glenn Redmond. I've been in now a good few times, I'd say nearly four times. It's kind of going over different ideas and they've been very good to me. And um, I think Jack's nearly covered everything I've here 14 years. I love the neighborhood um, and I see, I don't know, in Ireland when we buy a home, we're in it for our life, you know, we don't, that's it and that's kind of the way I see my house here in Reading. And yeah, I'm just trying to get to it, get, get it to a point where the rest of my days there will be comfortable. Okay. And uh, I should I should just add, sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. It'll be a two-car garage. There will be unfinished area above. He's not going to be finishing the area. Down the line, he could. He'd have to pull a permit through Glenn to do so. He doesn't have the finances here. He wants to get this up and just have, have the two-car space, but it will remain unfinished right now. I should add, like, oh, I think there was like 30 people on the list from uh, the butter's list. And there was only the one person down at the end of the street, Mrs. Fitzpatrick, and that was the lady who had mentioned to me that she gets water from up the street, but she's kind of down at the bottom of Walnut Street, and I think she's been into town hall a couple of times over the recent months. I think they're going to resolve her issue. 
through the OP of some drain pipes that are near her property line. But I really don't feel that anything I'm doing up on Curtis Street has any impact. But I went in, I sat down with her and her mother, and I, I was there nearly an hour. And in the end, I said, look, if it makes you feel happy, what if I do a drive? Well, she's fine. And then she you know, signed a letter of support. So I felt that the only person that had any concern at all, I was able to work with her on it. Thank you. Uh, I should point out before we get to the board or any anything that we have comments on that, as you can see, we have four members now. We just had a member recuse herself. Uh, she felt, you know, she she uh, couldn't couldn't vote on this particular case. Uh, so uh, what you're going to need on this, this is a variance request. So it needs to be in a unanimous approval. Uh, for, for this to pass tonight. You need the four votes of the members here. Uh, if you prefer, what your options are is you could ask for a continuation and go on to the, you might say, the next meeting, and hopefully I would expect that we would have five voting members at the next meeting then on that. Uh, or you can continue tonight and take your chances and go with uh, the four votes that you're going to get tonight. Uh, feel free to, if you want two minutes to talk it over, Jack, outside, that's fine. Uh, I, I think we're okay yeah. to go with the four members voting tonight. Okay. Thank you for presenting. Yeah, I, I knew that was the case. Um, but we're comfortable with the four members. Yeah. I, I certainly, though, just wanted to point it out to you for the record that, uh, you know, you are aware of that. And we'll do that. Uh, David, uh, any questions? Or let's say this. I'll read uh, Glenn's comments on this again. Glenn had a, a memorandum on this. Uh, he noted Curtis Street, 31 Curtis Street. This is a proposal to construct an addition to add a two-car garage, 26 feet by 32 feet, to the left-hand side of the dwelling that will be located 10.3 feet from the property line rather than the required 15 feet. A variance for this proposal is required. The property is located in an S15 district. The applicant has been informed of the difficulty in obtaining a variance. So that's Glenn's comments. Uh, David, any questions uh, on this particular so case? I just want to go over, you know, you've, you've been around the block a time or two with regard to these types of applications, and, and the first criteria uh, of the variance statute is often the most difficult, and I want to educate myself a little bit more uh, in taking that into consideration and go through it with you. <clears throat> the application is not based upon the size of the lot, correct? Correct. It's not based upon the shape of the lot? As a third minor criteria, it is somewhat asymmetrical. Uh, but Trapezoidal, I'm if you would? More so, correct. You know that's not, a, that's not considered an irregularity. It's not rectangular. So I'm, I'm right. not no. holding that as my I'm main hardship, but yeah. just to point right. out to the board, I'm not it's to, asymmetrical. I, I appreciate I appreciate your petition. I'm not okay. I'm not gonna. I don't. I, I'm not doing this to, to debate with you. I just wanna. I wanna understand. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> uh, and the topography of the land uh, of the property, uh, gently rolling. I think was sort of where you were with that. Correct. Okay. Um, and so there would be, so, so uh, the additional criteria is, that, that is sort of one that we, we often maybe take for granted, but it's, a, it's an important one, and that is that there's absolutely no other location to cite this without further encroaching on other setbacks. And I want to make sure that, you know, I, I understand, completely understand the, the uh, additional options that you've looked at, uh, <clears throat> they were all deemed less desirable to the homeowner, um, and, and I think we all take that into consideration as well, uh, because we're all homeowners and property owners and we want what's best for our property. Um, all right, I just wanted to, I wanted to understand uh, the um, first, first criteria. I think I understand the rest. Thank you. Thank you. Could I, could I say something on that? Like, sure. Um, Jack had mentioned about moving the garage forward as an option, but like the neighbors across the street, like I said, I've met everybody and I've talked to them all, but 
you know, a couple of neighbours across the street said, and they wrote it in their letters that they submitted, and they had a specific objection to me coming out in the lot because I'd be kind of coming in their face with the garage if I moved the garage out towards the front of the lot, you know. I understand. John? Um, continuing where you left off, um, on just the first criteria, um, there is a topographical problem with the lot, and that is the vegetated wetland area. So that does impose a restriction on it. It can, cannot be moved. Uh, it's certainly not the uh, subject matter of what this board can deal with. Um, <clears throat> In terms of um, what you had, Jack, what you had mentioned uh, before uh, in your um, wording on the criteria, uh, you did indicate that um, tearing down the breezeway and making it a, um, a um, <coughs> detached addition garage at this point, uh, but I would assume that somewhere along, along the line you plan to use the uh, space above the garage as a residential area or residence. Um, and if that be the case, that, that creates a problem. But it does, but does not remove where you're not going to use that as residence now. It does not remove the, the ability to, to take down the breezeway um, and move the garage over basically five feet, not five feet, uh, 4.7 feet, um, to um, get to the end result that you're looking for. Um, and that, again, you sat through the last case. Um, the variance puzzle is very specific. Uh, David mentioned that before. I think uh, the rest of the board indicated that the um, that one case does not predicate how the board is going to uh, move in a, in a following case or cases down the line, but the variance puzzle is very restrictive um, and they, the most difficult of the criteria are the first two. Um, I can see in the first one you have credentials. Um, on the second one, because there is an additional option, I think um, it becomes um, a question in my mind whether we whether I could vote in favor of that only because there is another solution. You can um, get to your end result, which is building of the two-car garage, which is the subject matter of how the case came in um, by taking down the, um, um, the breezeway, the, uh, the attached, the mudroom, whatever you want to call it. Um, if I could just add to that, John, to respond to that. Not only would it be the mudroom, but a portion of the deck would have to come down. And as I stated, right now, from the existing garage into the mudroom, there's a set of stairs up with a doorway. If that mudroom got taken down and the garage got built over there, there would still be steps and a doorway that now would affect the living space. So one of the criteria for number two is a financial hardship. He'd be losing at least a portion of his deck He'd be losing the existing mudroom area that's existed since 1946, and he may have to, he would end up having to reconfigure some of the existing layout of the house. So I think from a financial standpoint, that would be a burden to him. But there's another option to that too. You're asking for a seven by 26 foot storage area to the rear of the garage area <coughs> um, as part of the proposal. Um, how that is delineated um, is is is, uh, is is an issue. The, the definitely financial is part of the picture, but it is not a major part of the picture. Um, and you have been through this a, a number of other times. Right. I'm just pointing out one of the criteria is financial, so I'm just pointing out on, on that. That it would okay. Do you have a full basement? Yeah, yeah. Just, mm, uh, I do. I do have a basement. But on the, you mentioned the shed at the back. I just want to explain how that shows up on the plan that Stephen Basic done. That shed is 
he has done, we, we done the gamble roof so we could match the roof of the existing house so it looked better, you know, and, and put the two dormers in front, just kind of matched it in with our existing cave. The thing is, with, at, the, at the rear, we're kind of set, we're kind of keep it in the existing footprint of the existing garage, you know? Like it's, I don't have the map in front of me, but if you look at them, the map from Stephen Basic, the, um, there's a tree page. Yes, I'm looking at that right now, yeah, and that's the architectural it, design of yeah. it. Yeah, and that, the reason he had to kind of put that at the back was to kind of maintain the existing footprint of the existing garage, you know, because the garage at the moment is kind of in, the, the, the deck is mm. kind of built around it at the rear, you know. And so that's why we went for the extra for the storage space at the back of the garage, because what I found when I was going around meeting the neighbours, they were you know, allowing me to look at their new garages as well, and what I was seeing in there was when they had the two cars in the garage, you know, they had bikes, they had snow blowers and different items, and you could see their doors hitting up against them. They even said that, that they regretted not doing something different because they felt, you know, the kids, the toys, the bikes, were kind of stacked along the sides of the garage, so I felt instead of talking with Stephen Basic that it would be nice to have something at the rear to fill that the existing footprint of the garage is there at the moment, you know. Mm -hmm. Even if he took off that depth, if he took if he took it off, which he doesn't want to do, and in the mudroom state, we'd still need relief from, from the setbacks. It, it's it's a, it's it's a, the depth isn't so much the issue; um, it's more the width. Contractor mentioned like it could cost me up to ten thousand to take down the mudroom in terms of cost. I'm already out nearly three thousand, and I haven't even started the garage. You know, between the legal fees and the permit fees, the plot fees, I'm at about twenty eight hundred and fifty dollars, and I feel I haven't even started. You know. Well, I <coughs> I looked at it a little differently in. in <coughs> Um, I looked at it by moving it uh, by moving it over in essence three tenths of a foot and taking off the existing mudroom. Um, yes, you would have shoring up the house from the existing mudroom, which has already been shored up uh, because that breezeway was. I'm going to uh, assume, as in so many cases in Reading, that bree breezeway was an open breezeway initially, uh, and then uh, enclosed, so that the the structural walls probably are already there uh, for the size of the house. By moving the garage over then, just a, a, a small portion, um, you would not be losing um, anything in terms of um, the restructuring of, of the house. It's just that you would be able then to take the proposed storage area in the back and add that all the way back so that you would have, in essence, a reality of a garage that is um, 26 by 32, which is right now only 26 by 25, with a 7 by uh, 26 or 7 by, I'm not sure what the, uh, 7 by 22 uh, <coughs> proposed storage area in the back. It, it could be done, John. We, we know the mudroom could be removed. We're not we're not here to fight that. I know. I know. I know. I know, yeah, I know. But we see it as a financial burn. And okay. to, to be fair, I think a lot of weight should be given that. No, you know, I've never seen this many letters of support for a project. These are the people who live in the neighborhood. They support him. We didn't have one objection, and he did spend a lot of time going around, making an effort. This wasn't a design we just put on paper. I. I originally shrunk them down. I said, you got to keep at least 10 feet because I think I can maybe talk about a detached garage. I know it's attached. But just as you spoke about, years ago, people would do their home, have a breezeway, do a detached garage, and then they close them in, and it's 10 feet away from the lot line. Um, he's hoping just to do the right thing. I, I think the only way we can wrestle with number two is for us to make it a case that it would be fi a financial impact to him. But Maybe this board won't agree with that, okay. but to him it definitely is a concern. He's on a very limited budget. Um, I, I, work, I work with Dash Dice as a boss, and that's what I do for a living. And Cardinal O'Malley is a great man, but he's not a good man to pay, so I'm not on big money. I counsel people with Father John McCarthy for a living, and I work part-time. So, you know, maybe to some people who come before you, $2,850 isn't a lot of money, but it is to me. I've got three kids, and 
I have gone around in circles with, with Donna on, on the thing. And we, you know, we've gotten input from the neighbours and we felt really that the design that Stephen put together, as a matter of fact, with the gambrel roof, because we like the way it looks with the house, it's actually a more expensive roof, you know, than some people would have put on an A-shaped roof. Some, some mm -hmm. extensions have done that way on the street, but we just don't feel that they fit in as good, you know. Uh, one other point there on the setback, like at the front on the thing, we're only at 14.7 inches, like we're, we're only six or seven inches from the 15 foot at the front. So as visually from the street, when you look at the house, when it's done, you're not really going to notice that we interfere much with the setback, you know? I mean, we're almost there to the left of the garage. I, you know, Jack talked me into bringing it down from 28 to 26. I submitted my a letter kind of explaining why I, I'd like it held at the 26. Um, that's all I have with one exception, with one observation. Um, in the years that I've sat on the board, uh, the letters from the neighborhood uh, have been very important on special permits. On variances, they mean very little. Because the variance, <laughs> the variance, we're not talking about the neighborhood in per se. If you can meet the second, the third, and fourth criteria uh, in, in the board's uh, impression, of uh, what you're asking for, it's granted regardless if everybody, if those 23 letters that come in and says, I don't think that this is appropriate, if the board, are, if the board perceives that it's not going to affect adversely the neighborhood, it's going to vote in favor of it anyways. So to me, uh, in the past that I've dealt with, the, the uh, letters from the uh, butters and the neighbors uh, really don't have as much of an input as it does with a special permit. So. I, I might add, John, if someone was going for a variance and the director butters opposed it, that does weigh heavily into the, to, to the board. And usually the board asks if they can work with those abutters, maybe continue the hearing to try to work and come to some sort of arrangement. Mr. O'Sullivan went out even prior to any sort of hearing to canvas the neighborhood. And I, I mean, I've never seen anyone get more than 20 letters of support. I agree. Um, totally. I, I do think it should weigh in a little bit because I think if there was negative impact, let's say 20 neighbors all oppose this, you, you would be hard pressed to approve it because that neighborhood is basically saying we don't want it. Um, I, I think when, you, when you're looking at the public good, that weighs into it. So if 20 people say no, then that may not be in the, pub, the public's good interest. In this case, over 20 are saying it, they're, they're comfortable with this type of project. So I. I I do think it carries a little bit of weight. And he did spend a lot of time going about doing it. I, I know the major things of hardship in, 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 in the second criteria, and I know that's what we're gonna struggle with, number two in this case. Usually it's number one we struggle mm. with. If he didn't have wetlands, we wouldn't be in front of you. I wouldn't even be here tonight. Mm. That, that's his hardship. Um, but if we can somehow work through number two, I, I, I do think he's made quite an effort here. What's that, John? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I first reviewed the application, I was impressed with what appeared to be the amount of effort that went into putting this thing together. Uh, and uh, I did have an initial concern about a butter input because we didn't have that at the time we got the initial application. And uh, I was also concerned about the neighborhood impact. Uh, and before I get into the various criteria, I'll talk about those two a little bit. Uh, I took a ride over through the neighborhood. There's several properties with two-car garages, the likes of which you want to do now. So in my view, just looking at things, it would appear that there would certainly, in my mind, be no detriment the appearance of the neighborhood or to the public good by the structure as it is proposed, okay? Because there's several others there that are two-car garages exactly, well, very similar to yours. Uh, the abutter inputs uh, took care of another question I had, which obviously you did a lot of work 
going about doing that. As far as the variance criteria is concerned, uh, the only one I had real difficulty with was number two, uh, and uh, I guess one of the other things that uh, went through my mind as I reviewed some of the additional material is that, and I'll ask the question, is there a disability issue here? I have a disability, but I didn't really want to bring it in. I know, and I, I totally fine. understand no that, okay? Here, but it's totally very personal understand to that. me, you know. Um, my back was broken in three places in the last 25 years. I've, I've been dealing with it. It has gotten progressively worse. Um, I, I'm not in Cuckoo Land. I know that in the next 20 years it might get worse still, you know. So I'm, I'm being seen by two doctors um, at Brigham ongoing for spinal work, spinal injections, and so on and so forth. I did fall in the driveway a couple of years ago. I was seen. I had to go to the Cambridge Hospital, battled my ankle. It was on ice. And so for a long time, the two-car garage has kind of been a dream of ours. You know, we're just kind of getting there. Like it's hard financially with the kids and to try mm -hmm. and come up with money. Um, but I didn't want to come before the board. I felt I had, I felt I had enough in my responses to the four criteria that I studied on the website. I felt I, I had enough, but then in the last week, in, I just was getting a little nervous that, you know, a lot of people in the neighborhood had 24-foot garages and they regret building the 24-foot garages. I felt I would just see it before. I went out actually today and I measured the width of the door of my car and I, I, I sent the note to, to Jack. It's 47 inches wide. So when you drive in to a garage, to clearly get out without any discomfort or trying to pull yourself out of the car. My, my back is fused from my sacrum, from my tailbone, all the way up to T12. And so I don't have movement in my back in that level on those vertebrae levels that other people do. So, you know, I have to swing out my legs. I have a vehicle that's high off the ground because of my situation. You know, so but when I looked at the width of other people's garages, I, I just I felt that this garage is looking like it's going to cost me 40 or 50,000. I don't want to build something that's, I'm going to be sorry that it was a mistake that I didn't ask for from 24 to 26 foot wide. I was warned all along about how difficult it is coming before the board. Glenn Redmond said it to me a couple of times, a few other people said it to me, but I felt that if I, if I had enough of, of, um, of things put together and I really felt I had answered the four questions, I, from what my reading of the thing was, and I studied other people's cases who had come before the board. I spent a great deal of time on your website. I, I know I was late getting in the letters of support the morning this week, but that was because it simply took me a lot longer than I anticipated. I ended up going in, sitting down with people and chatting, and I thought I might get bits, one visit done in an afternoon and then went back to the kids. But So it did take me longer, and that's why I, had, I didn't have the letters in with the initial application last month. Well, I can certainly understand why you didn't want to bring it up, uh, but I, I got the sense in reading the application that, that that did influence, to some extent, what you, the, perhaps the size of the garage that you had ended up with, because you know you want you want to be able to get in out of your car, yeah. with sufficient room to open up the door to allow you to do that without a problem. So I just want to put that on the table. Uh, at least that's the impression I got. And I understand what you're dealing with because I have a son with fusions too. We did our garage so that he could get in and out of the car with a wheelchair right. in the garage. So it's, it's, it's. Well, then, I mean, for my life, the way I've seen the progression of my injury and the arthritis, I envision a day where I might need a ramp within the confines of the garage into the breezeway. Like I said, I'm not a negative thinking person. What happened to me happened. I've been on with my life. But I'm, as I said I'm not a cuckoo land either. I know that mm -hmm. down the road, one level living in my house, I thought all that out. You know what I mean? That's that's reality. You know. So I would just summarize my comments by saying I, I don't have any problem with the variance criteria. It's the one I wrestled with was two, mm -hmm. and I've heard some inputs this evening that make me feel more comfortable with that criteria. Nothing else. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, looking at the, myself, looking at the four criteria and seeing, you know, that you do have quite an impact of wetlands in the back there. Uh, you lose almost 
half the use of your lot there based on uh, uh, wetlands uh, back there. Uh, so I, I think that certainly has a bearing on uh, criteria number one. What I was looking at, and, and it, obviously it's been brought up just now with Cy, was the size of the garage, 26 feet wide. Could that be reduced? I mean, I, I've seen two-car garages down to 20 feet wide. You don't need the two separate doors. You, you, you have one door in the center, and you, you go with... 20 feet. Uh, I'm looking that you, you might even be able to go with 22 feet in this one, and uh, what would that do? They'd take four feet off, that'd be 14.3 feet, which is a, a little more palatable, I think, than uh, what you have now uh, on that. Uh, then that would increase the front there. As you would look at it from the front, you would have over 15 feet then. Uh, for your front setback on, on the side, the front, the corner of the garage there as it approaches the front. Uh, had you looked at that at all, decreasing the size of the garage uh, yes. a couple of three feet, four yes. feet? In fact, I, I, I don't think, I, to be honest, I don't think I've seen a two-car garage 20 feet wide. It would be real tall. I've seen, I can show you architectural plans. I, I've, I've no, looked. I, 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 <laughs> I believe you, but yeah. with today's, you know, I drive a Chevy Avalanche. Somewhat, it, it, smaller cars <laughs> would work. Um, I've and seen, they're getting I've smaller. Seen, I know. I've seen yeah. 20, basically 22 is the cutoff. Typically, you see it like a 24 by 24 garage right. for a two-car garage. Yeah. Like I stated, I'm being up front. When he first presented, it was 28. And I said, we need to pull this back to get at least 10 feet to have yeah. a chance with this, even with the case we have with hardships and, and whatnot. Um, I didn't know about his situation until tonight. Um, I know I have a 24 foot wide garage. My wife has a Suburban. I have a Chevy Avalanche. It's tight with three kids. That's because, our only storage because, area. Yeah, yeah, I know. So um, could he take two feet out of it and make it 24? Sure, he'd still be 12 feet. Um, yeah. Only thing, like I, when I was doing the measure of the car today for Jack, like I kind of took a quick look at the garage and like I'd start to talk to the architect about like two ten foot garage doors and say ten foot, ten foot and then say two feet at the end, you know, that's ten ten twenty two four six that's the twenty six feet and I appreciate what you say about the cars, mm. you yeah, know, you can get a smaller car, but for a parent today, like every Wednesday and Friday night I have three kids, I take seven boys who are twelve years old from Reading, all representing the town. Uh, they play in a private soccer team with Rush down in Bedford. So yeah, yeah, I do a big car, and that's really one of the reasons that they yeah. get to the, the size of the garage. But you know, with the family, it's useful. Some of the, the kids um, that I take on Wednesday and Friday nights, they come from single parent households where there are other kid, you know, kids, and so yeah, I'm doing people favors by doing the carpool thing for them. And you know, while I hate driving a gas puzzler, I do. It's expensive. But on those nights, it's it's worth it. Have the kids yeah. together, you know. So, uh, but like, it's just with the weight of the twenty-four. Just it wouldn't do it for me, mm. you know. Like it, have it looking at spending so much money on it, you know. And really, I, I'm just within six inches at the of the <laughs> of the fifteen foot setback. I'm at fourteen in the front. Seven in yes. the front, you know. And it's it's not my fault. It's really the, the shape of the lot. And I'll be honest with you, when I bought the place, I never knew about the wetlands right. in the back. I didn't, uh, no, I, no idea they were there. I had no idea that there was going to be a curtailment on the future potential. You know, it wasn't until years later that Frank uh, Fink finds yeah. out to me about the wetlands. And, and I think the three kids does play into it. Because when I, I have three kids, when I had two, had a small vehicle. Once you hit the third, you get into sports, you pick up one of their friends, it, now you have a bigger vehicle. That, so he's kind of looking at his situation. I know each case is viewed yeah. on its own. The situation is him and his wife and three kids, kids under 12. But he you knows know. what vehicles he had, he knows what you, works. You, you, know, you go to a park, public municipal lot, public yeah. lot, you know what parking space is lined at? Nine, nine by, feet by nine 18, by 18 feet. Right. 18, nine by 18. But then you nine by eighteen, and so, you get in, and you open your door. Oh, and right, that, and that's right. What we're saying. So if his space is nine, 
the other spot's nine, and then he's saying his door's third, 42 inches, three and a half. You start adding that up, and you eat up space quickly. That's why I think for his, like a 22 or 20. Oh, 25. it's nice if you can do it, but right. as I said, I mean, Sometimes you you know you, you own something and you have a constraint with it and you have to live with that constraint. Which we know uh, that's that's why we're that's here. That's why you're here. That's I know. Here. I know. If we made it, we wouldn't be here. <laughs> and and you know it's uh, Jack. Let me ask you a question too on the sure. survey plan on the plot sure. plan. Yeah. You have it laid out as a rectangle. It looks like correct with the ten point three feet back, but yet when you look at the layout on the architectural plan you do have that knock-in of two feet for the storage it, it's 20 it's the actual garage itself is 26 by 25 right and then you have another seven foot back by 22 foot but that's that's kicked in two feet okay so it's not reflective of what's on the plot plan does that affect what that offset is at the corner the 10.3 feet it would i would think it would i didn't know there was a kick yeah. Stephen Basic, sorry, Stephen Basic had a particular engineering or architectural reason for doing that. I can't it would help our case, is what the Well, it, it's <laughs> certainly going to, yeah, and I, I know you may not be able to calculate oh, now exactly what that offset would be, yeah. but uh, it looks like the corner of that garage might be closer to 11 feet as opposed to 10.3 feet Correct. On, the, on the corner. Uh, this was one of those situations where we had a, this footprint, 26 by 32, trying to get the architect to get the plans. Yeah, I know. The area, it, a lot of times, just coordinate in all parties. And, yeah. Uh, by the time this came in, I didn't know yeah. it was an adjustment, but that would help our case. It, it would, and uh, you know, and, and I can certainly, and I've always felt. I know David's working with the bylaws. I don't know if they have looked at the differences. In regards to offsets between detached and attached garage, and it's just a, a quirk of the bylaws that if somebody could build a detached garage 10 feet off the property line, whereas if somebody has an attached to their house, it becomes part of the house order, therefore it has to be 15 feet. A lot of coverage. And it's. It becomes a lot of coverage issue. Yeah, it does. It's a, it's a big difference. It, it does. Uh, it becomes part of the house then, and it's a lot of coverage. If it's detached, it's an accessory structure. So it's, you know, so, and, and you're absolutely right. If this was detached, you wouldn't be here in front of us. It would, right. 10 feet would be okay. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I was hoping that would weigh in a little bit in this case where yeah. it is a garage. If it's not like we're adding a sunroom or addition to a house and it's 15, a detached garage would be about yeah. 10. Yeah. And it's not detached, but we, we are talking about a garage. Use. Yeah. And uh, so that's, you know, you know, if you're, yeah, that, 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 those are basically my comments uh, on, on this. Was I was wondering if the, the width of the garage could be cut down a little bit to gain, uh, gain a little more. I, I would, personally, I would like to see at least the, the 15 feet in front. Uh, uh, offset for the garage and then I, I think you have an argument of the way the property lines are skewed uh, it certainly weighs in in argument number one the shape of the lot it, it's a skewed property line and, uh, and the position you, of the existing yeah house. The, the shifting makes the offset uh, uh, less as, as it goes back uh, but from the front it would be 15 feet uh, so uh, we can proceed on this. I can, uh, any further questions from board? And I, I can open it up for public hearing. Obviously, this is open to the public, but we'll open and close, open and close it. But if, uh, why don't I go ahead and do that? Uh, any, uh, we'll open this up to public comment. And uh, seeing there's nobody in the audience uh, to comment on this, we will therefore go ahead and close the public comment. Uh, any uh, further comments from board members? <clears throat> I am uh, swayed uh, more uh, after hearing the, um, the conditions that the applicant is in um, or the situation that the mm -hmm. applicant is in. 
uh, and whether it's 10.3 feet or 11 feet or uh, 12 feet or 14.7 feet, it's still a setback issue. And uh, I mean, we've, we've moved on this before. Variances have always, always been tough before this board. But um, I viewed it initially a little bit differently before hearing the situation that the applicant is in. So I'm, I'm certainly swayed more um, by that. And certainly, if we stick with um, what appears to be the architectural rather than the certified plot plan, which we would need to be, which we would need to be revised. I would anyways. like to see that revised, right, and get that correct offset up there in the uh, back corner. Yeah, which I'll need to do anyways with conservation if this gets granted. I, I need to show what's going to be built, and we should have a good record of that, so I would revise it. Well, the board has uh, had difficulty with uh, granting something without uh, an official document to, to um, attach as an exhibit. Attach, exactly, attached to the decision. Right. So, it's, so in that particular would, case, Jack, if we continue, we may want to suggest a continuation and uh, you supply an updated plot plan with the correct uh, layout or the correct footprint yep. of the garage and storage shed with the offsets there. And then good. that's something we would act on then at that time. I think that's a good suggestion. As a board, I would do that. We would seek to continue to, to correct that. Okay. Uh, any further questions? No. No. Okay. Uh, so in this particular case, you would request a continuation to able in to enable you to submit a revised plot plan showing the uh, a, the a new. Correct. Yeah, layout of the garage and storage shed there with the correct offsets on that. Okay. Uh, uh, the question is when, how, how much long time do you need? Yeah. Uh, I can do it quickly. I, I don't. I would what, think so. Uh, our next, next meeting? meeting is November 6th, to two weeks from. Two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. The first, first Thursday in November, which I believe is November 6th. Yeah. And after that, we're off for. Could a considerable be, time. Yeah. Because of town meeting. Yep. Yeah. And holidays. I don't think we have any other meetings in November, and we would have, a, I believe, one around the 1st of December. I can have this done quickly. That this change won't take okay, so we can half put you, an hour of time. You would be uh, agreeable to uh, the 6th. For the November 6th? Does that work for you, Karen? Yeah. Yeah. That we're agreeable to November 6th. Okay. Uh, I know Maureen, Maureen used to have uh, forms for a continuation. Oh. Do you have those? No. Yeah, one of those cases. Is that right? Yeah. And because yeah. usually it's the it's the uh, petitioner that has to request the continuation, and then we make a motion to accept that request. Uh, just, just as a. If but you, we, we if could. You don't, if you didn't nothing make it up on there. November okay. 6th, if you didn't make it on November sixth, our next meeting is December fourth. Just to have just to have that information. Not yeah. that you. Just okay. To make sure. I, I think it, I think we'll be all set. We don't have that here now. We'll just note it into the minutes. Kim will note it into the minutes that the uh, petitioner is requesting a continuation to November six. Uh, when was it filed? Hmm? When was the actual application filed? Oh. Uh, fourteen dash twenty. Oh, fourteen. When was the date? Stamped in when. Uh, stamped in. You, you have to ask these questions, John, huh? Let's see. Oh. Received uh, September 23rd. Oh, yeah, we have Okay. <laughs> yeah. okay. So uh, I would uh, entertain a motion from a board member uh, to agree to the petitioner's request to uh, continue the meeting to uh, November 6th. I uh, move to grant the petitioner's request to continue case 14 20 to the November 6, 2014. So, and you did request that, correct? Yes. Okay. In okay. order to? In order to modify the, uh, uh, or in order to certify, certify the plan. New yeah. plot plan. Update the yeah. plot plan. Yep. Okay. Do I hear a second? Second. I got a second from John Durima. Uh, any further questions? If not, all those in favor? Okay, 400. Zero, zero. We'll see you November 6th. And uh, thank you.
Hopefully all four members that heard it tonight will be here for November 6th. <laughs> and uh, we will continue it then. And, and oh, sorry. If, if Eric attends that meeting, he's going to get up, have to get up to speed, is he not? He mm -hmm. would. Uh, we, we could have Eric do that. He could uh, actually see the tape of tonight's meeting. Right. Get up to speed. Or else we could continue with just the four of us that are here tonight and vote on that. Uh, so, I would suggest yeah, I would suggest we about. contact him and let him know that he, yeah. if he's planning on attending the I will, I will talk to Maureen about that, about getting him uh, a tape of the meeting right. so that he can at least watch this portion and he will be up to speed anyway. Right. So he would be able to vote that night. Right. That would help us, I think. That yeah. would be great. So okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Very good. Have thank you. Night. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now I get to do some. Uh, it's a continuation. Yeah, I don't have to. Okay. Eventually, on November 6th, you can write it up if we have a moment. No, I mean, write up continuation. No. Have to write you don't it. have to. Do you don't have to. No. Okay. Then, I'll, then I'll make the motion on yeah. whatever it is. When, when we write up, uh, uh, so, <laughs> when we do the November 6th decision, it'll just, <laughs> just be noted that this is a continuation from this day. Well, I'll commit to right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you catch the uh, the score in the score? Yeah, they're winning. What was the score? Seven nothing. Seven nothing. Seven seven nothing. nothing. When I checked, it was oh, up. Like fifteen minutes ago. Okay. Just checking. Yes. Okay. Work on those a little later. Let's continue. Tonight we have, uh, let's see, that's good. the agenda. Okay, we have other business. Uh, we have uh, some minutes to go through, and we have other business. Uh, ZAC, you want to do the minutes uh, first? Get those out of the way? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Let's see. I know I gave my comments to Maureen, and I believe she's incorporated them into the finals. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if everybody had a chance to look at these yet. Uh, but we have uh, three dates here. We have uh, August 21st, September 4th, and September 18th. Why don't we tackle uh, August 21st? Does anybody need any time to review those? I only see one correction on page three. Okay. Uh, just for four minutes on the motion that apply. Yeah. Seconded by Jarema, the Zoning Board of Appeals moved to accept the applicant's request to with, I should be withdraw. Mm. Uh, oh, the applicant's request to, right. Withdraw the case without prejudice. Do you see that, Kim? I do. Thank you. Okay, so if you note that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Sai, for catching that. Uh, anything else? Motion to approve the minutes of the meeting on August 21, 2014. As as amended. Uh, as amended. As amended. Thank Second. you. Second. Uh, all those in favor? 
Okay. Five zero zero. Thank you. And next one is September fourth, two thousand fourteen. Seems like so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm I'm satisfied. I just Anybody need a few minutes to uh, go through it? Uh, the only edit I see was under the Zach report on the other business on page two. Uh, mm -hmm. Special town meeting was uh, September 29th. So, not October 2nd. Correct. So, okay. So, if we can change that, Kim? Yeah. September 29th. Thank you, David. Okay. I want to accept the minutes of the September 4, 2014 CBA meeting minutes as amended. I'll second that. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. And the minutes of September 18th, 2014. And uh, we we'll just, I think, all we need to discuss is the first two pages. Uh, we don't want to mention too much about the executive session. Motion to approve the minutes of September 18th, 2014, as written. Second by. Get that. All those in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you. Okay. Uh, under uh, the business, we have. Uh, uh, yeah, update or on the zoning uh, committee or Zach report. David, if you would care to uh, give us a uh, summary of what's been happening. Sure. I first start with an, an apology to you, Bob, the chair. This was a uh, an item that was added uh, last minute, and I had meant to mention it to you uh, to get your acceptance uh, prior to the meeting, but it, it slipped. Uh, so as we go through, I'll try to give that explanation now. Okay. Hopefully, hopefully it still still sits well with you. Yeah. Uh, at the uh, last official meeting of the Zoning Advisory Committee held this past Tuesday, uh, the uh, many members of town staff were present to discuss the upcoming town meeting in. November uh, and to go over the uh, public forum that we had last night over at the Senior Center and to discuss the town's new plan to present some of the zoning bylaw rewrite at November's town meeting under Article 8 and to save several sections to April's town meeting, to defer several updated sections to April's town meeting for uh, purposes of trying to keep it simple, I think. Uh, make it a little bit easier to digest at the town meeting level. Uh, and so uh, as part of that, it was brought to my attention that uh, many of the town's boards and commissions have been asked to uh, provide, if possible, support to be presented in the warrant and the uh, summary page to the warrant related to whether or not they support the article that is up for consideration in the warrant. Uh, and several boards and commissions have done that. Uh, the town manager asked me, because he knew that we were meeting tonight, if I would discuss with the board uh, whether or not we feel a motion upon further review, whether we feel a motion by the Board of Appeals would be warranted in support of upcoming Article 8 for a town meeting, and that that vote and the results of that vote would be included in the warrant as evidence of probably one of the 
primary boards in town that deals with uh, the zoning bylaw in support of the changes that are being made. Uh, to that end, I thought it would be wise for me to give at least a summary of the uh, sections that are due to be presented in Article 8, uh, many of which we've discussed at length as a board, uh, many of which the board has given uh, input, which has actually been included in the uh, updated town bylaw. And I have in my greedy little hands a draft version of the proposed new zoning bylaw, um, still uh, draft dated October 6, 2014. Uh, still 167 Four. pages, uh, 164 pages, yes sir, thank you. Wow. Uh, but uh, comprehensively rewritten and reorganized uh, to reflect the work that the Zoning Advisory Committee and other boards and commissions have done. And so, uh, uh, prior to town meeting at sep on September 29th, uh, the medical marijuana bylaw was passed, was voted up. Uh, and all but one of the additional sections were voted up. The section that was voted down by a very slim margin was the uh, purpose section. Uh, there was some uh, wordsmithing that was uh, proposed uh, and that will be revisited again in April's town meeting. Uh, so the sections that, are, that comprise Article 8 of the November warrant are the section on administration, which is sort of self-evident, the, the, the permit granting authority and, and what boards and commissions and staff have authority to grant relief. Uh, use regulations, what would, that's now gonna be in section four, administration. Use regulations, which is section five, uh, including accessory buildings and structures, accessory apartments, which by the way, got quite a bit of attention at last night's uh, public forum. Uh, the new Section 6 of inten uh, Intensity Regulations, Section 7 relating to non-conforming uses and structures, and the new Section 12 added, which is applicability and severability, which is essentially a severability clause, meaning if any section of the bylaw is deemed or ruled or judged as invalid, it does not invalidate the entire bylaw, that uh, invalid section would be deemed carved off um, and the remaining bylaw would live on. Uh, the, uh, these, these sections have been available to the public for some time. Uh, some members of the board may have, uh, especially those that know how many pages the new bylaw is, have certainly uh, been aware of and reviewed these uh, changes and the work product. Uh, and I think I would like to leave it up to, this, to the chair's discretion as to whether or not uh, it is appropriate prior to November town meeting for this board to uh, offer a vote on whether this board would support the changes being proposed in Article 8. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we could uh, do an informal poll on that, uh, no problem. I have not seen the new ones myself, so I, I would uh, probably uh, say myself that I don't think it, it's necessary right now. Uh, I haven't uh, seen the new bylaws. It's uh, really not up to us to approve, disapprove, or whatever. I, I suppose we can support them with a vote. Uh, our job is that the Board of Appeals is more or less to, to hear appeals in regards to the bylaws or to enforce the bylaws as we see, see fit. But Kathleen, uh, I don't know, you, could, you know, I don't know what your feelings yeah. and John's and size on that, but Kathleen, if you. Again, I haven't seen them, but just from your summary, um, maybe something to support. But again, like you said, mm. I would agree with what you said. 
Right. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's, the, that's the goal. Not mm -hmm. that no. this board supports, supports. Right. the proposed changes that would be contained in Article 8 mm -hmm. and thereby supports the work of the Zoning Advisory Committee and those town boards that have uh, worked to put that Sounds together. Yeah. Uh, and I think that would also carry a lot of weight mm -hmm. uh, coming from this board. Uh, who is charged with, as you said, interpreting and, and uh, enforcing, enforcing those yeah. uh, regulations. So I think that would actually, uh, may actually carry more weight uh, than some of the other boards that have been consulted and mm -hmm. offered support. Don't uh, day in and day out enforce the bylaw. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly if, if it, well, it, and so the timing of this, uh, the reason why it was added last minute, according after discussion with the town manager is uh, that the warrant and the warrant summary, and I'm probably calling that the wrong thing, but the uh, warrant description, warrant summary is off of the printers in about a week or so. And if the vote of this board, if we were to grant the vote of support uh, for it to be included in that mm -hmm. uh, printing, we would only have this meeting to do it because if we wait until the next meeting, it will be past the time where it can be yeah. included in the warrant. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I apologize for the short notice. Uh, and uh, I had just learned about this two nights ago. Uh, but I thought it was appropriate, and I think it is appropriate, in my opinion, um, that the board uh, offer its support. Um, to the proponents, uh, you know, to, to the town planner and to those of us that will be presenting at town meeting uh, to describe and advocate for these changes which are good for the town. So I'll, again, uh, I'll leave it up to, the, I'll leave it up to right. the members of the board as to whether or not we think a vote of support is, uh, is warranted. And, and Some might it. say that you have to pass the bill to find out what's in it, right? Yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> It, I it, did scan it, through it. It, as a it matter certainly. Of fact. I, I think. I think. You know. Personally, I support it. I think it's something that's been long overdue. A revamping of the bylaws, and uh, I may not have seen. Uh, you know exactly what the finished product is going to be yet, but I'm confident that it's going to be a uh, substantial improvement over what we have now. We hope. Yeah. <laughs> I think this John. Good. I, I did go through it. I didn't read it completely, but I scanned yeah. through it, and, and there's a lot of good work that's in that thing. Yeah. Like Fox sure says, we're here to enforce what's there, enforce what's there, and I think what's there is going to be a lot easier in many areas to enforce than what we've had now. Uh, the one, only one thing caught my eye, though, in the administrative section of it, it said that the Zoning Board of Appeals will, come, will shall have three members and two associates, whereas the current one, I believe, says three members and three associates. So that probably that, a typo. And, and actually, I don't know if it's a typo, <laughs> but I mean, it, it's it doesn't say as much as or a minimum amount. It says shall be. Yeah. And you may want to look into so that. So that would say we have to get rid of one of our members. Well, that would change a. Huh? I'm going to say John will know. Oh, it's five, yeah. six, ten years ago, maybe. It wasn't that? No, I was on the board, and I've only been on the board. This is my thirteenth <laughs> year. So uh, <laughs> you see it there. I'm going to say ten years, because huh? the first three years, three or four years, I no, which is three members. I you, think it's when you came on the board. You, it was you and me <coughs> and uh, Mr. Larkin. I have it right here. Yeah. And there then it wrong? was you and me and Ed. What's the I'll same? Read, I'll read for it. Ed, okay. uh, and I can't think of his last name right now, but uh, I'm going to say that was at least for two uh, terms that I was on. It was three. So okay. I'm going to say Nine. five years. Uh, so I'm going to ten years ago. Okay. Okay. He's going to read exactly what it is. But it's, it's it, they, they chose to go up to five members. I know exactly when it happened it was after uh, the West Street development went in and we went through that 40 B and remember I think the town was thought that five members would give a better vote than three members on that after the whole uh, project went in on West Street there I think that's mm -hmm. when it went in could be yeah but uh, so the uh, establishment of the Board of Appeals, section 4411, there is hereby established a Board of Appeals of three members and two associate members to be appointed by the selectmen 
as provided in the law, which shall act on all matters within its jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. There is no shall, there is no well, shall state, be. State law so. allows, I believe, to have a zoning board either have three members or five members. And, and we, are right now, we are operating right now as five members with two associates, right. not three members. Right. So if they want to go down to a three-member board, then two, two people on the board, if this passes, yeah. Will be um, so you might want to run that by them, David. Yeah. <coughs> well, we can. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll certainly. Uh, I'll certainly mention it uh, to the yeah. town staff. You know, I, I think that establishes a minimum standard. Candidly, it does. Three uh, is the minimum. And so I don't think that there's anything that says that we can't no. have more. Yes, but that's that's a town bylaw, so that establishes the parameters of the board. I'll bring it up to them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, certainly it mentions good, it, it, good, it bears good asking the question. Yeah, no, it's a good yeah. pickup. It bears it bears asking the question in the new uh, in the new What's section. The by law saying. Uh, good question. I, I thought it said three and three. Well, it may say that in the beginning, but you have to go to the back of the bylaws where they've made adjustments to the bylaws. Yeah. And uh, it should have been picked up, but I bet you it hasn't been picked up. No, it's up. never well, been changed in the front. Yeah, right. three and three, three members and three associate members right. is what's in the current right. okay. version of the bylaw. Uh, so yeah, yeah I'll, I'll bring it, I'll bring it up to them. Uh, oh, we're in violation Mike, right now. I was Mike, no, it, it huh? was it was amended by town meeting ten years well, ago. Well, that may well be, and it but never it should have gotten picked up in here. In the back side, I know. all these. I know. All these, but you know, those amendments should be picked up in the, uh, in the yes. In the, you know, all the, these uh, here. Official copy. Amend, amend, amend. I know. Yes, but it it, it may be good. Yeah. And again, I'll, I'll bring it up yeah. to my yeah. my thought yeah, is those are minimum right. standards. Right. It caught my attention. Uh, right. But no, it, it, bear, no, it bears noting mm -hmm. certainly, Sia, si, uh, and I'll and I'll send a note over to uh, to Jesse yeah. and and uh, you know, she's Maybe sort of the keeper of the record. Maybe it's to go back to three members. That's fine too. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I can see George. Well, I'm, the oldest, here, right I'm the oldest person here. I don't <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I've been here long as I get to resign. I'm talking age, not tenure. Oh, Jeez, oh, talk about running to the door. Huh? I know it, huh? <laughs> I, uh, I can see. Well, gonna... If you want my input on what we started, um, the board has never been asked to support or do anything with any bylaw changes in the past 30 years. Mm -hmm. Never, ever. And I know this is a, a major change, and I think that um, in the past, I've always supported the uh, the uh, stand that uh, this board cannot support or not support a particular bylaw going forward because it's been asked to interpret all of those bylaws. And if you ask me for support in approving, I can't do that because there's issues within this bylaw that I can't support at all. I think it would be a detriment to the town. But I'm not about to go out and say that in any specific area of the bylaw because I can't. Because if I'm sitting on the board, I have to, I can't have, I can't have a preference that I've already stated uh, and then rule on a particular case comes before me. Otherwise, I would have to accuse myself according to the new state standard of ethics. So I can't do two things at one time. So I can support the uh, Zach Council and what is accomplished and the, the, uh, the town fathers for granting these funds to go out there and short of recodifying the bylaws have been able to accomplish something that is going to support the town to a more to a, to a standard that is elevated to today's needs for the town. But I can't, I, I'll stop right there. I'll just say that I can support the efforts that the town has gone through and the fact that we're going through this exercise and if the rest of the town meeting supports it, um, if I'm on the board, um, then I would be entrusted to use that language, whatever that language is, to hear the cases before us. And I'll, and I'll just add to that. <laughs> that it, it would still be a very persuasive uh, vote of this board that a majority of the board supported Article 8. That's, that's great. I think that's great. <laughs> Even if it wasn't unanimous. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I, you know, I, so, so rather, than, rather than belabor the point, yeah. I, I, I'd like to make a motion uh, that, the, that the Zoning Board of Appeals 
uh, cast votes in support of Article 8 that is coming before town meeting on November 10th, or actually, no, November 10th, but probably not likely November 10th, probably on a yeah. date subsequent, but that's the date of the initial town meeting. Okay, and that's basically it. So, okay, it's I got a motion, it. second. I can, uh, I had no problems, I would support that. Okay, all, all in those favor. in favor? Raise your hand. All those four, opposed? One. Let right. the record show. Four, we one, have zero. Four, one, zero on the vote. Uh, and I will uh, pass on, and you can too. Uh, I'll pass on to probably to, to Jesse and Jean. Join security and stuff. Sorry? Your associates? Your associates? Well, well, no, I'll pass this vote on. Oh, okay. uh, they'll want it, they'll want to include it in the warrant article, okay, yeah, and, the, that. and that's going to the printer. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to notice a section the, for no board information. Right. Not in there. No. I don't think it was ever noted there. Was, yeah. I don't know who did it all. I know it was, we were tasked yeah. one time. That, thank okay, you for your support. Woods five. No. You're welcome. Thank okay, you welcome, David. Support. Thank thank you for your, all your yeah, a lot of efforts in this and a lot of work. A lot of work. It's not over yet, but, nope, the, but the zoning advisory, yeah, but you, advisory you, committee's you meetings are over. Ah, sure. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Coming into the home stretch. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're, okay. we're going to present that at town meeting. Some of the members of the zoning advisory committee are going to try to be there at the podium to offer support and, and uh, answer questions. Good. Thank e you. Excellent. Thank, oh, thank you so much. Uh, for all your time you've put into it. Certainly we appreciate it. Labor of love. Uh, Say it with a smile. <laughs> I think that's pretty much, we've covered everything we have on our agenda tonight. I would uh, accept a motion for adjournment. Motion to adjourn. Second. No second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> it was an article uh, in town meeting in 1989. 1127, and it addressed the Board of Appeals and associate members of the board. Well, that, that was before I came on, and when I came on, it was 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, three, three, three members from the